All right, so now I'm going to talk about an Excel add-in that's been created by myself as well as from at least one student, Matt Rivera, who a number of years ago worked on this with me. And what we did was we created Excel add-ins for thermodynamic property valuations that match the textbook values. Actually, what we did, took the values out of the textbook tables and then just did the lookup like you would do by hand, but we did it in Excel using those exact table values from the textbook. Okay, so download the files from Blackboard. They're in the Excel add-ins folder, and there's really only three, one, two, three files for water, for steam, so they cover the tables A2 through A6 in our textbook. Uh, refrigerant 134A, I don't know why I left off the A, sorry about that, but it's uh, tables A10 to A12, and then selected gas tables, basically the air table, and then selected gas tables. So I recommend that you put or create an add-ins folder in the C drive, but you could put this anywhere. But I found that it just works if I have a C drive, I know where that's at, I create an add-ins folder inside that, and then I copy those files and put them in there. Now I've got a bunch of garbage, but right here are the three files, here, here, and here, and they are add-ins, Excel add-ins ready to go. But wherever you put them, you just need to remember where you put them, and we'll use that in, what, about 10 more slides. Okay, so go to Excel open up Excel and then on a clean Excel file it really doesn't matter it doesn't have to be clean but click on file right there and after you click on file you get a long list maybe it thinks you want to open a file and it has some suggestions I covered this all up it's just my stuff don't need to see it but basically down here at the bottom there's options and that's where you want to go you want to go to options at the bottom and so you click on the options and it pops up in Excel options sheet. And there's a lot, formulas, proofing, languages, blah, 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 add-ins right here. That's where we want to go. We want to go to add-ins. So left click on the add-ins, which will uh, continue with this Excel options, but uh, you'll change the interior of that window see so this has been selected add-ins and a lot of this is is I just covered it all up um, because you don't need to see it but uh, after we do the add-ins if you did this again you will see what you've added here that's what you'll see you'll see that H2O you'll see that refrigerant 134A and you'll see selected um, uh, gas tables but at this point you won't see them there'll be other stuff but you won't see what you want to add so you'll hit go right here and so it's manage Excel add-ins hit go and there'll be a small pop-up window all right so this small pop-up window will show I've made it a lot larger so we can see and a lot of these I've already had them but you won't have them here they won't be here if you don't have solver uh, add it in. I encourage you to look that up. Do a Google search on Solver and uh, you'll find that that's a very useful tool. But um, these, this is where we're going to add. So you will not have them there, but after you add them, they will show. Okay, now click Browse to go and find those add-ins. So you'll have to remember that you put them in the C drive. So you'll have to move to the C drive. And then once it's the C drive, find that add-ins folder. That's what I recommend. You can, you can put them anywhere you like. And open up that add-ins folder. You select it and then open it. And when you open it, you'll see something like this file or the other file for the uh, other three add-ins that we had. Uh, I covered up a bunch of my junk. But you want to go ahead and select one at a time. Select one at a time and hit OK. and then they should pop up and after you do it go back and get the second one repeat the process and then go back and get the third one repeat the process when you're all done click OK after you have all three of them and they're showing in that box with the check you know the check right here right next to it 
Now go back to that Excel file and just start trying things. So I just typed in, I said, okay, the pressure in kilopascal, 101.4 kilopascal. If I wanted to find the saturation temperature, I'd start typing equal to TSAT underscore P, so saturation temperature as a function of pressure, and then you can see it's starting to auto-suggest. Do you want it for refrigerant 134A out of table A11? Or do you want it for water out of table A3? Uh, I want it out of water for table A3, so I would use my cursor, scroll down in that list, and then hit um, tab. Anyway, you would then uh, select cell B4, B4 for the numeric value of that pressure and you have to have default units or assumed units these are kilopascal for the tables that I've constructed so the default units are kilopascal and so you would close that parenthesis and hit return and it would return 99.9 blah 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 degree C that's the same as uh, uh, essentially the values in their textbook okay um, Tip, if you're familiar with Excel, if you have typed a function name up here, you can hit this uh, symbol right here, and it will pop up some information about that function. So here's function arguments, the name of it, and what you're typing in, and what it will return. Okay, so it's going to return that value, but there's no help available. I think I used to have some help available, and then, I don't know, it's a lot of maintenance, maybe I did something wrong and it's not now available but uh, many of them do have help many of these don't have any help and just want you to know that and so you hit OK but the basic format this is the basic format is what property are you interested in are you interested in enthalpy put H um, specific volume put D uh, internal energy put U entropy put S okay and then you put an under bar and then you have two properties that are coming in. Those are the state principle. What are my two inputs? Here I'm looking for enthalpy as a function of pressure and quality. So P and X and then underscore. Oh, I'm looking for what fluid? I'm looking for water. Out of what table? In our textbook, table A3. And then uh, this is the, where I can find the value of property and that's where I set the cell for the value of the quality. So if I had a quality of um, um, what 50 percent now I had a pressure 101.4 I could get that qual enthalpy right here so this would be cell E4 for the quality and B4 for the pressure now if you want to see inside what you need to do is uh, you need to go and hit this developer tab in the ribbon for Excel so the developer but you may not have it. It's not defaulted to show the developer tab. So all I can say is just Google, do a, you know, how do I get the developer tab to show in Excel? Two or three steps and you got it. I don't want to spend time here telling you that. Just go and get it into Excel if you don't already have it there. But once you hit the developer tab, it'll pop up and you, you have this visual basic tab uh, part right over here there's a bunch of macros and other things that you can ex look at but this is just get to the basic information and when you open that up you'll find that you maybe you've installed the h2o thermo add-in maybe you've installed the r134 add-in um, forget this one this is another one that i have okay but if you click on this right here inside that opens up the h2o thermo and then you can look in modules and typically there's description then a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 but in the descriptions right here uh, you can see it, there's my name there's matt rivera he changed his last name after he graduated the gladson and um, took his father's last name but anyway you can read a bunch and i'm going to not scroll down but click to the next slide which is showing information further on in this file and there you go really it's telling you all these function names so X 
x as a function of t and h. So quality is a function of temperature and enthalpy for water, H2O, and table A2. And then quality is a function of temperature and entropy. And then quality is a function of pressure and entropy. And then saturation temperature is a function of pressure. And uh, saturation temperature function of saturated liquid specific volume or saturated vapor specific volume or uh, saturated liquids internal energy and it just goes on and on and on and so if you really want to see what's there good if it's been commented out um, it's been commented out and it'll look green it's like this is a comment right there that's a green okay the other thing is is after descriptions you can explore and just take a look at what's inside of this one and you can even see how it's built so here's the little function if i'm interested in the saturation temperature as a function of pressure for water using able table a2 it basically is a very short routine and it basically calls something that you never really the user really never sees it's this this funny name here that Matt and I worked on P1 P2 underscore H2O underscore A2 and there you go and if you scroll down you can see P1 P2 underscore H2O underscore A2 and that's internal to this um, add-in but I don't I, I just show you how to explore and then when you're tired and you want to get back to the Excel just click right there on that icon and basically you have, basically have the the developer tab open with the windows and all this VBA code, right, for select the gas tables, refrigerant 134A, and you can explore how, you know, table A11, A10, A12 has been implemented, table A23, table A25, all these functions. But when you want to get back to Excel, click right there, and then you can jump back and forth, developer tab here and there. Well, that's all that I wanted to show you. And next, I will stop this recording and then have another recording of actually using it to solve a problem.